Hey everyone, how's it going? My name's Francesca and welcome back to Small City Plants. Mm. It is, I apologize if you can hear these ice cubes, but I'm not trading them for any kind of sound quality. It is so gorgeous here in Ontario right now. The sun is out. It's been like 25 to 28 degrees every day. And today I'm feeling so much better. It's that summer energy finally coming out of a winter blaze. And I wanna share with you some of the many plants I have bought or traded for over the last few months. So this video will not include any of the plants which I showed in say like my latest anthurium video which has uh, four little anthurium seedlings that I've gotten over the past couple months because I showed those recently. This is going to be all new plants that you haven't seen before and I actually just got back from the very first Toronto flower market of the year. This is like a monthly event and it's one of my favorite things to do in the city. It's like one of a few reasons I will go downtown in Toronto. And I picked up some beautiful flowers, which I will arrange in a vase with you, as well as some gorgeous plants that uh, I got from both Crystal Star Nursery and Centered by Plants. I think I'm also showing you some plants that I got from Plant Haven Toronto and yeah, a lot more that I've traded for. So I'm just really excited to share this haul with you and I'll start not with the ones I got today. I'll start with some of my other ones. By the way, this drink is delicious. I know it's not everyone's favorite flavor, but this is a, um, a Ikea. They sell like these like syrups, like cordials and the elderflower one's really popular, but two years ago, they had a rhubarb one and I haven't seen it since, but when it was there, I bought like three bottles of it. So this is just rhubarb syrup with a uh, top top of tonic water and it is so refreshing. So I'll show you a couple that I traded for recently. So that would be this one and what was the other? Ah, this one. So one of these is a wish list plant. I'm so excited. So uh, I traded a couple cuttings of my Hoyas with this lovely woman who doesn't live too far from me. Uh, we have traded many times. Uh, she's just lovely to meet with. And one of the things that I traded with her for was this really pretty Peperomia Frost. So you can see it has like this pinkish shimmer to the leaves. This one's a little old and dying off, but there's also like a very white one. Cats! Mommy's filming. Bowie, leave your sister alone. Thank you. So yeah, Peperomia Frost. Uh, I think I might have mentioned it before. I am not a huge Peperomia fan. Previously, I had a Peperomia watermelon, which I destroyed in an embarrassingly short amount of time and have since not loved it much. The only Peperomia that I have in my collection before this is the Peperomia prostrata, also known as the string of turtles, which grows really, really well for me. So I'm excited to add this one. I just saw that she had it and I thought that, you know, this looks really pretty. It, yeah, kind of shimmery and it's doing really well. Knock on wood. So that's one of the plants, but the wish list one that I got from her and the old leaf is kind of like curled up and dying, but there's a new leaf coming in. This, <sighs> If you watch my wish list video at the beginning of the year, this was on it. This is the Alocasia scalprum. So it's a really pretty plant, nice dark green leaves. Uh, it hasn't gotten that traditional kind of scalprum lobe at the top yet because it is a baby. But as I mentioned, there is a new leaf coming out. So that'll be here soon. I'm just so excited to watch this grow. It's in no drainage right now in a mixture of pawn, leca, and perlite. My cats are so happy I'm home too. Um, and it is probably my favorite potting mix for alocasia. And I almost always have baby alocasia in no drainage. Because I find they're such thirsty plants, it's much easier for me to leave like extra water at the bottom for them to uh, soak up. So if you are considering no drainage, I think alocasias are a great way to kind of test the water because 
They love water. So these two are my little traits. I'll put them aside. From Plant Haven Toronto, I got two Hoyas. Uh, one is taking off. So this here is my, um, I don't, I might have shown it on this channel. I honestly can't remember. This is my Hoya Pubicalyx Black Dragon. Yes, black dragon. So the flowers on this, if you look it up, they're, they're like very dark and almost black. Um, it's a really beautiful plant. Unlike other pubicalyx, which I have found to have much wider leaves and a lot more natural splash, this doesn't seem to have any. It's just very green, basic plant, but not in like, I don't think basic and it's a bad term. I think it's a very basic, pretty plant in the sense that the foliage is very simple and that can be really beautiful. So I'm loving this plant. It is in soil mix. Uh, I've had it for many months. I've already, when I got the plant, I cut it up. So there's three different cuttings in here. Um, they've all rooted, all taken, and all are putting out new growth. And you can see this one at the top is putting out tons of new growth. So really excited to have this one in my collection. But the other one, and I have my little label on it because I have been playing with a label maker. Um, this is a Hoya stenophylla. Stenophylla? Stenophylla, I think is how you would say it. Um, so let me try and get this to focus, but it's probably not going to do so well because it's so spindly. I think that's as good as we're going to get. So it's a very spindly little Hoya. You can see there's a time when I got it where it lost a couple leaves uh, just in shipping. It's a very delicate plant, so I'm not survived, uh, uh, surprised. Eventually I will chop this piece without leaves and use that to propagate it and put it back into the pot. Um, so there are a couple Hoyas that I would consider similar. Um, I think one is the Acicularis. There is, oh my goodness, there's so many Hoyas with these kind of like spindly, beautiful leaves, but they've never really spoken to me. I've always seen them and thought, oh, they're interesting until I saw the stenophylla, and I've only ever seen this at Plant Haven Toronto. I don't know if other places have it, but it has just, it's so delicate. And if you look up pictures or I'll try and show you a picture of what it looks like when it's a little bit more grown out. And I just love the way it hangs and it's so delicate, so delicate. I just think it's really beautiful. Eventually I'll try and grow it up something I think, but yeah, really happy for those two from Plant Haven Toronto. What should I show next? Okay. This one I got a couple weeks ago. I saying I don't love peperomia and then I'm showing you two peperomia that I've gotten. Uh, this is just your standard peperomia hope. I have, I have to say, I have, of all of the peperomia, I've always loved the um, peperomia frustrata, the string of turtles. And then the other one on my wish list has always been peperomia hope because it's not a, like, it's not a rare plant, quote unquote rare. It's not hard to find. It's very easily accessible. I just like the growth pattern. I like the way that it grows. Um, I've always seen like full hanging baskets of this and thought they were very pretty. So I actually need to repot this because I know it's not in as well draining a soil as it needs. So I will probably be doing that actually towards the end of this video. Uh, along with maybe a couple others that need to be repotted. But yeah, I just bought this at like a local plant store. Next up, I found this in a TLC section in a plant store near me. So this is uh, just a ooh, piece of soil fell out. This is a um, Philodendron Florida ghost. It was listed as a uh, Florida ghost mint. But I have a feeling in the right light, this is just gonna be a straight up Florida ghost. Um, it was a really big, long spindly plant. Um, this was the base of it. Uh, I decided to chop it because I didn't want all that spindliness. So I have a couple wet sticks rooting and I'll see if they do anything. This is the top cut and this is the base. And also today, I think that I'm just gonna take this out because when I potted it up, I took a look and I didn't see any active nodes or potential spot for new growth to come from. It looked like it had all been chopped and propped, but I figured I'd plant it anyway and see, but it has now been like a month, nothing has happened. So I think it's time to throw it out, but you know, worth it to check, you never know. 
Next up, I, <laughs> I'm so excited about these. Okay, I got, I went a little wild <laughs> with plants at the beginning of this year. I'm gonna have to calm it down for the rest of the year. Um, I have, I got these two plants together and I'm gonna do something with them today. So let's start with this. This is a uh, Philodendron Majestic. So the Philodendron Majestic is a uh, cross between the Philodendron Sodoroi and the Philodendron Varicosum. This leaf, you can really see that. So it has the silver on the front, like the Sodoroi, but the back has that Varicosum red. Uh, I've always wanted a Majestic. I have kind of the two other big hybrids uh, that are very popular for climbing Philodendron, which is the Philodendron Glorious and the Philodendron Splendid. The Glorious has been a bit of a struggle for me, but I think it's pulling it together now. The Splendid is taken off, is amazing. So I've got, you know, some hope for the Splendid. Bowie, what are you doing? My cat. The other plant that I got is this Monstera Albo. So I got this one at a really good price. Um, because I know it's just one leaf, uh, it looks like though it is a top cut. It also has two nodes on it and it is growing on a chonk. Um, it's not doing the best in this current setup though. I wanna take it out and see what's happening because I wanna get some more root growth on here. Uh, we'll inspect this later in the video, but if you look at the stem, so when you're buying like a Monstera Albo, you don't want to just go based off the leaves. You want to go based off the stem and there is a lot of variegation in the stem. So I'm really excited for how this one will turn out. And then last, but certainly not least, this I wanted even more than an Albo. This with a new leaf coming is my baby Monstera Aurea. Look at that plant. Oh, with this new leaf coming out. I love this so much. Oh, it also has this really great aerial root coming in the pot. Oh, I love this plant so much. Monstera albos are, I always thought were nice. Like, don't get me wrong. I'm really glad to have one. I think they're beautiful, but an Aurea always really was like right here. I'm like, if I ever had to choose and I could only have one, an Aurea or an Albo, I was gonna have an Aurea. But you know, now I have both and a Tycon. So thank you Plant Market for becoming more affordable and accessible. So now, you know what, let me pull over the plants that I bought today. I'm gonna run out of space fast. Be right back. Okay, so first up, I did get quite a few plants, but it was a Toronto flower market, so I did do a build your own bouquet and I bought some flowers. So I'm gonna show those to you. So here they are, it's just like a little pretty bouquet. I have some um, snapdragons, I have a white cherry blossom stick, and I have these. I just think the color is beautiful. Ooh. It's normal to lose like some petals in the travel. That's all right, this is what happens. I took a long transit ride to get home. So let me cut up these stems and put them in some water. Yeah, there we go. I think that looks so sweet. Yeah, I really love this. I really like minimalistic uh, flowers. I think this just looks really pretty and these white cherry blossoms will open in the next day or so. So super happy with those from the Toronto Flower Market. 
Let me clean them up and then I will get to the plants. So I actually used to do like flower arranging when I was younger. Um, whenever I would go and visit uh, my family, when we would go back home to uh, the UK, uh, I used to do like flower arranging with my grandma and I actually used to like do some like competitions and stuff in like a very like, you know, like fun, not large scale way, but like little community events. And yeah, I always love flower arranging. Should have known I'd get into plants or something like this. Mm. But speaking of, what should I start with? Let me start with what I think is the only philodendron I got. I might eat my words, but I think this is the one that I got. So my husband actually got this for me. This is from a uh, place called Centered by Plants. It has been on my wish list a while. It's aerial roots are wild. Let's see if anyone can figure it out before I say the name. This is a philodendron mexicanum. So uh, kind of at first glance, it kind of looks like a l there's a lot of philodendron that have this gorgeous dark front and then red backs to the leaves. So the leaf backs are red. Um, but the mexicanum I think is just really stunning. It has a new leaf coming out. The other one that I have that's green on top and red on the bottom is my subhastatum, but the leaf shape is very, very different uh, than what a mature Mexicanum is. So I'll throw up a picture of a more mature Mexicanum. I just think it's one of the plants that I've always wanted. Um, I think it's beautiful. So I'm excited to get this out, but you can see the aerial roots are wild. So I think we need to get this onto a moss pole best. One of them is in my snake plant jungle. Bowie, Bowie, what are you doing? He loves to hang out in my plants. As long as he doesn't do any damage, it's fine. Okay, and then also from Centered by Plants, I'm so excited for this plant. I told my husband, I'm like, oh! and I'm like, it's one of the plants that's like on my like wish list right now. It is a Hoya Gunungading. I might be saying that wrong. Look how beautiful that is. You can already see the bottom leaf here is a little red from sun stress. It just has really striking veins. Um, yeah, and I love how the color that it turns when it's sun stressed. So uh, I think that's gonna be a goal is to sun stress this one in particular. Uh, it's in pond, the roots look good. They look a little dry. I might take it out and hydrate it a bit. We'll see. Also, because if you know me, you know I don't like square pots. We'll make it work. So, Hoya Gunungading. Next up is my haul from Crystal Star Nursery. Uh, first of all, I got some new Hoya trellises because the ones that I have are. Uh, I have a lot from Crystal Star Nursery that have just come with the plants, but I am. Now seeing that they are dramatically outgrowing them. So I need some of these big boys, uh, probably for ones like my, my Hoya Imperialis, which need a little bit more support. So it's just a uh, rubber coated wire. I find they're really secure, really easy to work with. So glad I have these trellises. And then, this cute little bag, <gasps> my bag of goodies. So I'm really excited about this because you might have noticed if you watch uh, my, all of my videos, I have in a previous video said that I kill all of my orchids. Uh, just, I can't keep them alive. Uh, and a lot of you gave some tips and I'm like, you know what, that's it. I'm gonna try for actually growing an orchid and I'm gonna try with an orchid that is, um, that is not like your typical one. Uh, what is it called? A phalaenopsis, I think it is, the ones you find in like grocery stores. This orchid is a dendrobium, and I'm not gonna be able to pronounce, I don't think, the full name. Yuang Fuang Feng? Oh, it's gonna be reversed on here anyway, but I'll put the name on screen. Uh, but here it is. It's a really beautiful orchid in my opinion. I spent a lot of time researching to find an orchid that is miniature. Um, 
be careful around that because I found out that a lot of people label orchids as miniature when they're not. This is an actual miniature orchid. Um, and it has beautiful yellow flowers. So I'm super excited to see this one bloom. If I can get it that far, you know what? Let's, let's take blooming out of the picture. Please pray that I can keep this alive, please. So super excited for this dendrobium. And I can't go to Crystal Star Nursery and not get a Hoya. What is this? This is my Hoya Sigillatus Atlas River. So I've been looking for a long time for kind of like a more oval or yeah, I guess oval is the right word for it, oval leaf Hoya. Some ones that I've seen but I've liked are the GPS, is it 7240, 7420? Um, I'll show a picture. Uh, that one's really beautiful. That's one I was looking at. I was also looking at the Hoya, um, is it GPS 720? Oh my goodness, there's a couple Hoyas with this kind of shaped leaf, but I really, I don't have a Sigillatus, um, and this Atlas River just looks so beautiful. So here it is, up close. You can see it has two little baby leaves coming out right in there. Uh, it looks like a really cute plant. I am really glad that I got this. It's gonna take ages to get it out of the moss, but Hoya Sigillatus Atlas River. And then, oh, there's one more. So five total plants. Uh, this one is an impulse purchase. And by impulse purchase, I mean I have wanted this plant for a long time. Um, like passively wanted. You know how there's a difference between like, I need this plant, I'm actively searching for it. And then there's a passive wish list, which is like, I really like that plant. It's around, I really like that plant. Every time you see it, yeah, I really like that plant. That's my passive wish list. So this was on my passive wish list, and I saw it and I was like, should I, shouldn't I? They had an anthurium wind lingeri, which was beautiful. And my husband's like, let's get it. And I'm like, no, it's too much money. And then I saw this one and I was like, oh, I've always liked this plant. And he's like, then we're getting this one because it's nowhere near as expensive. So let's hope that I don't hurt myself. I'm actually give you a hint what kind of plant it is. Hope I don't hurt myself bringing this out. I'm so scared. I'm so scared. It's in bloom too. It's got some buds. This thing is deadly. There's been some things in like Toronto and Southern Ontario with an increase of crime on the uh, on the transit system and I'm like if anyone you know tries anything I have the best defense system right here I'm like if anything is dangerous I'll just throw a cactus at them so this is a variegated opuntia so what's the official name opuntia monocatha variegata so you can see, so the back is very pale, so it's kind of just one tone. Let's see if I can. But the front side, there you can see more of a variegation. And you can also see there's two little flowers. Let me see if I can get those flowers in here. There we go. So there are the flowers. They're super pretty. Um, you can see that the uh, variegation on it's really pretty. So I'm pretty sure this is just a variegated prickly pear? Is that what it is? I don't know. I've always just seen them as like the variegated apuntia and I really like them. It's really difficult where I am. Yeah. So first of all, you don't get the best light in winter in Canada in general. And then I'm not in a south facing window, which I suppose is great for my other plants. So I'm going to have to put this one under a really strong grow light and hope that it does okay. I know it's a really slow grower in general. I don't even think, even though it's in a square pot, which I said I dislike, I think I'm just gonna leave it. Does it have any roots? I see some roots at the bottom, but cactus like being root bound. So I'm really glad that I got this one and I am gonna be so careful with it. My cat's right here. You need to be careful with it too, buddy. Yeah, no, this one isn't for you. Yeah, this one's not for you. No, that's yeah, okay. Little Bowie bear. So super excited to bring that one home. So that is some flowers and five new plants today. 
and a lot more plants that I've gotten in the last few months. But what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to take you through how I'm gonna care for some of these new plants. So some of them I've had for a few weeks. They need checking on, maybe they need to be potted up, maybe they need a moss pole, maybe they're just not rooting and I need to figure something else out. We're just gonna take a look at the ones that I've identified might need something. And then I'm also gonna show you how I'm going to welcome these new ones into my home. Let me get a bowl of water. So this here is just a bowl of water with some Super Thrive in it. And I do find that the Hoyas from Crystal Star Nursery are very dry in their moss. Uh, and if I ever wanna get the roots out of here, it's gonna need to be soaked. So just gonna start that right now and just put the Sigillatus Atlas River into this water to start let the moss absorbing some of it. All right, so. What do I want to start with? My potting mat. I'll kind of move you down a little so you can get a better view here. Less of me, more of a potting mat. That's good. Uh, so I think I'm going to start by checking out my Philodendron Majestic. So it's topped with moss to try and encourage some root growth. I'm gonna move that aside. I'm gonna take my chopstick off of it. And see what's happening with these roots. So the roots are very fine, but they don't feel dead. I almost wonder I have found that even um, Philodendron Splendid also has very fine roots. Maybe it's a varicosum trait, I'm not sure. I'm just checking to see the health of these roots. Those are a little dead. Let me grab out my scissors. Okay, most of these actually are not looking great. All right, so this is what I'm left with. Not much. I've taken off most of the roots because they didn't look great. Um, I think what I might do is actually get this started on a moss pole and hope to activate some of these buds or some of these like aerial roots towards the top here. So I don't think that's gonna focus. But yeah, I think I'm gonna get this on a moss pole and see if I can activate some of those aerial roots a bit better. So for the moss pole pile, I need to bring out a garbage can when I do this too. Oh well. Okay. This also needs to be cleaned out. It has a lot of dead roots in it. No problem. So I always recommend, um, if you can, it's something that I do all the time, is um, to reuse your perlite, your pond, your leca. Um, and the way I do that, and your moss, um, the way I do that is the same for all of them. I fill them, I put them in a pan. I have a specific pan that I use personally, but it doesn't matter. Uh, I fill it with water, like a saucepan. I cover it with water, and then I uh, bring it to a rolling boil for about 20 minutes. And then I drain it and let it cool, and that sterilizes it. So it's better for the environment if you can reuse as much as your plant materials as possible. Next up, let's take a look at this elbow, which I'm also not feeling good about the roots on. So again, topped with moss to see if I can activate anything. Yeah, so I had a problem when I got this that the chonk was rotten and it has continued to rot and I think now it's reached the point where I need to cut it, unfortunately. It 
it's not what I want to do, but I think it's what I have to do. So I've had to cut this completely fresh, no roots, not great, but it's better than the rot spreading, which is what is happening down here. And I think there's no other node. Nope, that's been cut because that was one. Yeah, I don't think there's another place for this to push out from. So I think it's going to be getting rid of this chunk because there's no other place for it to grow from. So garbage pile. And again, I'm going to boil and reuse this perlite. I'm also going to get a glass and put some water and hydrogen peroxide in it for this one to kill any of that rot bacteria so that it doesn't spread up here. Yeah. I'm, I'm hopeful. I'm hopeful I can get this to root. I really am. And there is a new leaf on the way. It's so small you won't be able to see it, but there is a new leaf on the way. I need to get this into a better situation and fast. Here I have a glass of water, some hydrogen peroxide, and I don't measure, I just eyeball. I used to measure now I have a gut sense. And I'm gonna put this guy in here and let that kill the bacteria. Given the rot, I'm also gonna be sure to disinfect my uh, scissors really well. And this is just with an isopropyl rubbing alcohol. Definitely, I mean, always disinfect your scissors, um, but especially if there's any concerns for rot because that bacteria will transfer. And suddenly everything's rotting. Uh, oh, this guy can go back in the cabinet. Ooh, well I have you. Do you want to see some Hoya blooms? There's some blooms on my Hoya elliptica. They're really pretty. This plant is doing so well since I repotted it a while ago. The blooms are almost done. So if they're putting out sap, which means they're receptive, but I'm not gonna try and pollinate them. Then I'll put those away. Okay. Just chopping and dealing with it all this morning or this afternoon, I guess. Oh. What next? Okay. Let's dump out this uh, Florida ghost pile of nothing. I'll make sure that there's nothing active on here. I really don't think there is. Nope, there are no viable nodes on here. So this one is for the trash. I'm also not a fan of the soil. It's the soil that it came in and I just don't like the texture and it's so gritty that I don't think I'm gonna be able to reuse it well. I feel like it's soil that was already at the end of its life. You can um, reuse soil too. I bake it to sterilize mine, but you can only do that so many times uh, before it, you can tell some soil just gets to the end and it's not gonna be good anymore. And that's this, so. You can only reuse soil so much. I'm gonna throw that out and wash my hands. Okay, next up. I wanna take a look at this Peperomia Hope because as I said, I do not think this is in the right soil mix. Peperomia need a well-draining soil. They are semi-succulent, kind of like Hoya. Um, and it's just been like holding on to so much water. And yet, ironically, some of these roots look dry. What's going on here? See, like a lot of the bottom ones have been like rotting off. So 
Yeah, so this is uh, a very peat heavy mix, which means that, sorry, that noise is my cat playing with his toy, um, which means that it'll hold on to water, but then dry out really fast. So it'll like, it's not well draining. Peat mixes are not well draining. Yeah, this, these roots are not good. Not good at all. My uh, well draining mix here. It's a mix of soil, leca, orchid bark, and different sizes of perlite with some added charcoal. I'm gonna put a layer at the bottom. And it looks like there are, let's count one, two, three, four, five little individual plants in here. So that should fill out nicely. and I'll just fill in around them. much happier in here. I think it's going to do a lot better. My gosh, my cat is just climbing everything right now. Anyway, I think this is going to be a lot better and I'm going to put it in a bright northwest facing window and I think it'll do great. You ever get bored in your life, get a cat. They'll keep you entertained forever. Uh, let's look at... I kind of want to pot up this Majestic and also my Mexicanum is definitely gonna need a moss pole too. So, I think I better get started on that. Okay, so I have two moss poles. I'm gonna need to get more. But I think this is a good start. These are just the Grow Thickly moss poles. Uh, so they're clear. I have also made lazy poles. Um, which I have like the sheets for that. So I find those are really good for when I'm trying to like propagate and then retake cuttings. Maybe I should do one of these on a lazy pole. Yeah, I might also do one on a lazy pole. My instinct is to do this guy on a lazy pole because I have a feeling I'm gonna be chopping and propping soon to help it size up faster. So let's peel back that sheath. Yeah, maybe I'll put this one on a lazy pole. And then the Mexicanum on one of the Grow Thickly ones. I think that might work well. Okay. Okay, so I have a clear sheet of plastic with some different size straps to make a lazy pole. I have some moss, which has been pre-soaking in a mix of um, water and Super Thrive to help it hydrate better. And I think I'm ready to go. So I'm gonna start by assembling the lazy pole, which I'm terrible at. I think I've only done this once before, so don't laugh at me. Or, you know, do whatever, your prerogative internet. Um, I'm gonna start with this moss. So it's all like soaked, um, but I'm gonna squeeze out the excess water so it's only damp and then place it in the middle of the pole.
So there we go. It's partially filled lazy pole. I put the strap around the majestic to hold it in. And then I'm actually going to put it into the soil mix. And I'm going to put an extra strap to secure the plant in place around one of the other nodes because the, I might actually use Velcro for that because the goal of this is to get it to root. So I want the nodes touching as much of the moss as possible. go some plant velcro right around wrapping the plant in place and there we have it it doesn't look pretty right now um, the whole thing with uh, lazy moss poles is is that and especially when it's a new pl a plant going on a moss pole for the first time it's always going to look kind of a mess because when it had no moss pole, it could kind of grow whichever way it wants. Now though, it has to like all the leaves have to adjust to this and face the right direction. So it looks a bit of a mess now, but it'll get better in time. I think that's gonna be good. I think that'll grow really well. Just needs a little bit of time. Perfect. So philodendron, philo, philodendron majestic, done. Okay, I think next I just wanna get my moss poles done. So I'm gonna take a look at the Mexicanum. Let's take a look at my Mexicanum. Oh my God, this plant is so pretty. I can't believe I own it. It's so nice. The leaves are so beautiful. I love dark foliage like this. Like I would choose dark foliage any day. pretty well rooted. He's got some good roots. Okay, that pot can go aside. I can clean it and use it for a plant that I want to sell or trade because we don't use square pots in this house. All right, so I think I'm gonna, that's all I'm gonna loosen up the root ball uh, cause it seems pretty happy. Um, but I am gonna give it more fresh soil because I think it, it would like it. And it's aerial roots are so wild. Oh my goodness. All right, thought. I'm thinking this nice green one. Yeah, that's perfect. That's perfect, okay. It's gonna be this green pot. Put some soil in at the bottom. That's gonna to be too much. There's a thin layer at the bottom. And then the plant will go here. So many aerial roots. I think that the moss pole will go at the back here. Or will it go here? No, it's gonna go at the back here. Okay, so moss pole. This is gonna be a little bit difficult because it does have such big aerial roots and this is a grow thickly pole. So it has preset holes. So I'm gonna have to like slide it in there.
perfect. Okay, I'm probably gonna top this off with some more moss soon, but I think this looks really good. Yay! Okay. Another one done. That was actually easier than I thought it would be. All right, this is a lot of aerial roots in here. That's great, perfect. Should help it adjust. Let me move this one to the side. Okay, next up. You know what? I think I need to clean up this workstation a little bit because I'm done working with soil now. Now I'm over to moss, pawn, things that are a little less grimy. So let me just clean this up. Okay, next up, my Sigillatus Atlas River, which has been soaking very dutifully in a bowl of water. So I mentioned before that I really dislike things uh, potted in moss. I don't mind it for moss poles, but as an actual like potting medium, I really can't stand it, especially for Hoyas because of how hairline and fine their roots are. So gonna spend the next little while untangling this mess and seeing what's left to work with. Okay, so some of these roots are most definitely dead. Um, I'm going to be putting this into pond to root and be its final substrate. So I'm gonna move, remove as much moss off of these as I can. So this is gonna take a minute. Okay, so the end of this Hoya was dead, so I cut it off so it didn't rot and then spread up the stem. Uh, I've cut to a good point because it is bleeding white, so that is excellent. It has some marks on it which make me think of flat mites, so I might actually give this a sulfur treatment as well, we will see. But uh, for right now, I'm gonna put this aside to let the end callus off. While I let that callus, I am actually going to clean up a little bit and let my camera charge up and then I will be back to deal with the remaining plants. Okay, hey folks, I'm back. Um, while I was off camera, I actually also repotted this dendrobium because I was really nervous about it and I just kind of wanted to do it for myself. We'll see how it goes. I'm so nervous about keeping this orchid alive, so pray for me, but Next thing I want to do is I want to pot up my Hoya Sigillatus Atlas River. So this little guy here, I definitely think it's hard to tell if it's sun stress spots or if it was flat mites, but either way, it's actually just going to go straight into my greenhouse cabinet, which has beneficial mites, which also help against flat mites. So I think it's going to be okay. So let me grab my pawn. 
So I have here my standard pond mix, perlite, leka. There we go, quick and easy. My Sigillatus Atlas River, and it'll go in here and have some water at the bottom, but I will leave that for now. I also want to take a look at my Ganungading. It's honestly really well rooted in here. I was gonna take it out, but I don't think I'm going to. I think I'm just gonna give it a water and then leave a little bit in the bottom of here and let it let it do its thing. Cause, oh, it's so pretty. That's for Ganungading. So that's all of the plants, except now I'm just gonna come back to this um, Monstera Albo. So I have left the end to callus. It feels pretty good. And I'm going to just pop it in this perlite, cover it up, and it's gonna go into my cabinet to root. That was a super easy wrap up. Uh, but yeah, let me move this up. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope you enjoyed seeing some of the recent additions to my houseplant collection. I mean, looking around, I have so many favorites. I mean, I already put the Monstera Aurea away, so that I think speaks to how much I love it. But I think that this variegated Opuntia and the Kudungading, I think these are really, really cute. Uh, I love them. But I'm also really excited about, let me bring it over this philodendron mexicanum because it's so beautiful. Like, look at this with the ganungading. Like, you can tell my dark green and red, like, little obsession here, and I'm not gonna apologize for it. I hope you enjoyed uh, potting these up with me, taking care of them. I am so excited to watch these grow, like that new leaf coming in on my Monstera aurea. I am so excited to see that variegation harden off. And hopefully we get some roots on this Monstera albo soon because it's, it's a really pretty plant. I wanna keep it alive. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up. Uh, also leave a comment below. Let me know which one of these new plants uh, your favorite is. And let me know if you've gotten any new plants recently. I mean, I've pretty much exhausted most of my wish list, So can always use some new suggestions. Uh, you can also hit subscribe because I will be posting new videos every week for 2023 so you can see these plants grow. And I think that's it. Yeah. I hope you have a wonderful day wherever you are and I will see you next time. Bye.